Hey, John Crooks here with part eight in our series of pitch and pitch systems in tonal music. Today we are going to try and build a diatonic set or a major scale that has in tune major and minor triads. Remember that we are thinking about our pitch system as a circular system based around a two to one ratio of frequencies, which we call an octave. So in a previous presentation, we did build a Pythagorean scale, which was built entirely around three to two fifths. And this got us a great sounding major scale uh, that was almost circular, except that B to F is not a perfect fifth. It is a tritone. Uh, further uh, examining this Pythagorean scale, although it sounds good as a scale, the triads, for instance, C to E to G, are not perfectly in tune. We discovered that an in-tune triad has a ratio of 4 to 5 to 6. And further, we found that we like to use minor triads and minor sounds in music, and so we like to have in-tune tr major triads with a 4 to 5 to 6 ratio, and minor triads, which have a 10 to 12 to 15 ratio. So today we will try and tune a diatonic set or collection that has in tune major and minor triads, and we will see the result. Okay, we have seen this screen before. Right here we have our circle of thirds, which is a diatonic set of seven thirds, where all the triads, the major triads, are just triads, four to five to six triads. And over here we have an XY oscilloscope where we can see uh, three pitch relationships laid out on two axes. What we're going to do today is try and find out if we can tune a diatonic set that has in tune major and minor triads. And a general note, uh, throughout this series of presentations I have been showing us uh, uh, several ratios and saying that they are either four to five to six or three to two or what have you. I have not been actively doing the mathematics for the most part of, of these ratios. So what we see are these final numbers. And I encourage you, if you want to make sure that my math is correct, to go and use a calculator. Pause the screen at any time you'd like to and see if my math is correct. Um, and, uh, and also just get a, your own tactile sense of how these ratios are working. Uh, in terms of frequencies and numbers and ratios. So we did this successfully in a previous presentation. We built our set of major one, four, and five triads that were all just and in tune. One, four, and five. And again, this harkens back to the cell phone ring that we heard uh, a few presentations ago. part of the tonal system. And these triads, unlike the ones we developed using a Pythagorean stack of pitches, are in tune and sounding good. So now let's look at a just one triad. And let's just remember some of these numbers here. And another thing to keep note of is that occasionally I'm going to do an octave change so that the pitches we are hearing over here and seeing are double what we see here. Uh, on our circle. That's because higher pitches are easier to hear when they're streaming over the internet. Um, so if you see a discrepancy between some of the numbers here in the circle and some of the numbers over here, it is because I have just raised them or lowered them by one octave. So here's our A440, C264, and E330 hertz. And let's just listen to our just one triad again. That's our major triad. And let's move over now to a one minor triad. Okay. There we can hear that sound. Da, da, da. It's a minor triad. And if you see right here, although this C is 264 hertz here, I've doubled it to 528 hertz, similarly with the E. But it's still the same, right? Because all two to one ratios in frequencies sound roughly the same to our ear. And the numbers work out great. We can have a just one triad and a one major triad and a minor triad. And we don't have to really change anything in the frequencies. Things have worked out very well for us there. 
Now let's listen to our five major triad. G, B, D. And our five minor triad. Again, this will be built on the pitch E because the fifth degree of our relative minor is E. A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four, five. And this is getting a little bit into the realm of music theory, tonal theory, which we're not discussing so much. Um, but you can keep up at home if you look it up on Wikipedia or something like that. Um, so, so far things are looking very good. We have one major and one minor. And these are all just and in tune with the correct ratios. A major five triad and a minor five triad, just and in tune. Now let's look at the four triad. F, A, C, and again we see this is a nice in tune looking and sounding triad. And let's build now a just four minor triad, which will be based on the pitch D. It'll be D, F, A. Okay, so there it is. That's an in tune triad. It has the ratio of 10 to 12 to 15 in terms of frequencies and hertz, but let's look at the number for D. 293.33 hertz. And let's look at the number for D in our just four triad. Or actually, I should say, in our just five triad. There it is. That's two different numbers. And now we've gotten down to a real issue with our diatonic tuning system. When we built a stack of Pythagorean fifths, we got a diatonic set that sounded like a major scale, but the triads were all significantly out of tune. In a previous presentation, we heard these and they didn't sound quite right or look right on the oscilloscope. So we decided instead to make a diatonic set where all of the major triads, the tonic, subdominant, and dominant major triads were just and in tune with a four to five to six ratio. And that got us this set right here. Now, when we tried to add the minor set to this group, we came up with a little bit of a problem, which is namely this pitch D. In order for us to have triads that are minor and in tune, we end up with two different pitches called D. And this is a phenomenon called a comma. And we can see it right here. There are two different pitches called D. One is 297 hertz and one is 293. And when we hear this small difference, it is pretty unpleasant. Um, and we can see also the waveform is quite irregular. So we can't have a diatonic set, a major scale of seven pitches, where the one, four, and five triads in a major key are in tune and rationally pure, four to five to six ratio, and we have a relative minor with one, four, and five chords in minor that is also in tune. And this phenomenon, which we call a comma, is rather pervasive and causes a lot of problems when it comes to trying to tune a system uh, for tonal music. And so we see a circle of thirds with one, four, and five minor chords all in tune, and one for one, four, and five major chords all in tune, and we get two different pitches called D. Now, when we look at our pianos or guitars or any instrument with fixed pitch, we don't see two different keys or two different notes for D, one for when we're playing in major and one for when we're playing in minor. Our system for tonal music actually is a circle, as we've discussed quite a bit, where all octaves are a two to one ratio. So this is a pretty significant problem. We're unable to tune even a diatonic set of seven pitches, never mind a group of 12 pitches like we have in our chromatic system, uh, perfectly in tune with nice pure triads. Even if we try a Pythagorean system, we end up with triads where all of the thirds are out of tune. And when we try to do this using thirds, where every third is a pure third of some kind, we end up with problems like that resulting in the comma. So how can we resolve this? In music theory, we see the circle of fifths and we sort of take it for granted that we have this nice circulating system of pitch 
where we can modulate from one key to any other key where we have relative and parallel minors and where two to one octaves really govern the whole system. But we don't see this being reflected in the mathematics of triads or of um, circular systems of three to two fifths. So how are we going to solve this problem? Well, let's look to future presentations to find out. So we're finding some complications trying to build a tuning system that behaves the way the tuning system we see in the circle of fifths looks. We tried building a diatonic set of seven pitches using a stack of fifths, which is called Pythagorean tuning, and we got a diatonic set that sounded like a major scale, but whose triads were all pretty out of tune. We decided to make the circle of thirds our governing principle and found a set of three major triads that were in tune and a set of three minor triads that were in tune. But when we put them together, we find this thing called the comma, a small gap in the circular system. So it would seem that although we really use tonal progressions every day uh, in music and take for granted the idea that we can modulate from one key to any other without there being any significant intonation problems, we have trouble doing the math to create this even using just a seven pitch diatonic set. So although harmony, even in its name, implies that there is a harmonious relationship between the pitches in our circular system, we are having trouble finding what the mathematics of that harmony really is. Pure ratios sound good and look good in an oscilloscope, but they are hard to make consistent through even just a seven pitch diatonic set. In our next presentation, we will see if maybe we can solve that problem by expanding our set to include a 12-pitch chromatic series of pitches like we have uh, in uh, tonal music today. So we'll see how that works out, and thanks for spending this time.